Hi there. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about complete combustion. Let's start off with the flow diagram that we've seen before. Here, fuel is combusted in the presence of oxygen to form a flue gas in a burner. The fuel can be in the form of coal, oil, gas, either LP gas, liquid petroleum gas, or natural gas, diesel, petrol, paraffin, or biomass, including wood. The oxygen is typically fed to the system in the form of air, containing oxygen and nitrogen. And all the solid residues from the combustion, things like ash, is taken off as the solid product. The flue gas can be wet or dry. In this case, it's a wet flue gas. But once the flue gas is passed through a dryer, to remove all the water, we end up with dry flue gas. This flue gas typically will still contain soxes and noxes if we burn a fuel containing sulfur and nitrogen bonded to the carbon. Remember, this is not the nitrogen coming in with the air. However, we can put this flue gas dry coming from the dryer through a scrubber to remove the SOx and NOx to give us a dry flue gas, sulfur and nitrogen, or SOx and NOx free. And here we have a picture of a typical scrubber to remove the SOx, in this case SO2, and NOx from the system. Now let's do an example of such a combustion problem. Here we have a flow diagram of a combustion problem similar as we had before, but now we are told that the S, the sulfur is going out as SO2, the nitrogen is going out as NO2, our fuel is coal, we have 25% excess air or oxygen coming to the system. All the streams are numbered from A to H. We also need a coal analysis. And in this example, I use the same coal analysis as I did before. Remember the one where we did the proximity analysis and ultimate analysis, ending up with the coal analysis. Now there's one more thing we need to solve this mass balance. And that is a basis. Seeing that we have the complete coal analysis fed as fuel to this burner, let's assume a basis of 100 kilogram coal into the system. Now in this example, I don't want to spend too much time on all the calculations, but I want to quickly recap on what is combusting, and if we talk about complete combustion, what are we getting? Now, the easiest way to solve a mass balance like this is to go think about the stuff that's combusting, putting it in a table, and calculating the theoretical oxygen required for the combustion of the combustibles. And here's the table as I would draw it up. All the carbon goes to CO2, seeing that we have complete combustion. The hydrogen goes to water, the nitrogen goes to NO2, and remember, this is the nitrogen in the coal, and not the nitrogen coming in with the air, and we were told that it's going out as NO2, and then also the sulfur is going out as SO2, seeing that we were told all the sulfur in the coal burns to SO2. We can now add the mass of every single one of the components in the coal coming in. So the coal, 79.90 kilograms, the hydrogen 4, the nitrogen 1.30, and the sulfur 0 0.69. And using the molar mass of every component, we can convert it to the kilomoles in. Lastly, we can use the chemical reactions as described on the left of the table to calculate the oxygen theoretically required, giving us 6.65 kilomoles of oxygen required to convert the carbon to CO2, one kilomole to convert the hydrogen to water, 0 0.09 kilomole to convert the nitrogen to NO2, and 0 0.02 kilomole of oxygen to convert the sulfur to SO2. We now tally this up to calculate the total oxygen theoretically needed for complete combustion. Now, I can stop this problem here, but I'm just quickly going to run through the calculation of every single one of the streams, A to H. 
We know the OTN for theoretical combustion is 7.77 kilomoles, but we have 25% excess, which means that we have 9.7125 kilomoles of oxygen coming into the system. We can now calculate the kilomoles of air in and the kilomoles of nitrogen in with air, giving us a complete analysis of stream A. Stream B, we already have, as it is, the coal analysis. It's the fuel stream coming in. Next, we can calculate stream C, and that's all the ash coming in, leaving as solids going out. Calculating the first part of stream D is also easy, as it is the CO2 out, which is the CO2 produced, the NO2 out, the SO2 out, which were both produced, and the N2 out, as all the N2 coming in with the air is leaving the system here. To calculate the oxygen and the water leaving the stream D is a little bit more work, but still not difficult. The oxygen out is all the oxygen coming in, which was the 7.77 kilomoles in, or theoretically needed multiplied by 1.25, which gave us 9.7125, minus the 7.7, .7, which was the amount of oxygen that reacted, the theoretical oxygen needed to convert all the combustibles into its oxides. And that leaves us with 1.9425 kilomoles of oxygen leaving the system, which was unreacted. The kilomole of water leaving the system is all the water coming in plus the water formed during the reaction, where this is the bound and the free water coming in, and this is the water formed during the chemical reaction. Dividing all of those, the free water and the bound water in by its molecular mass, and the oxygen by the ratio of um, water formed per mole of uh, oxygen coming in, we end up getting 2.4 to 3 kilomoles of water leaving the system. And seeing that stream E is the water leaving the dryer, it must be exactly the same as the water in D, the value we just calculated. Stream F is exactly the same as stream D, it just excludes the water that was removed in E. G is all the SO2 and NO2 that came in with F, now leaving the scrubber. An H is the remainder, which is CO2, N2, and O2 leaving the system, after we scrub the NO2 and SO2 from the flue gas. I hope this example helps you. In the next lecture, we will talk about incomplete combustion. Hope to see you then.